Hi, and welcome back to our Sprinter Build Series. Today we're going to be working on a backup source of charging for our battery, for the house battery. So we have a big 300 watt solar panel on the roof of the van, and that provides nearly all of the charge that we need. But we want to be able to have a way to charge just in case we run into the event where we've got really bad weather and um, we don't get enough solar power. So I haven't had a situation like that yet, but I thought it'd be a good idea to install some backup power. So we have this little Samlex 600 watt inverter, has a little USB port, a couple of duplex outlets, and then um, or duplex outlets, and a switch. <clears throat> and we want to wire that to the battery or the charging system on the van. So we've taken out the four bolts that attach the seat to the um, factory swivel suite seats and then we removed the swivels themselves and so this leaves us with the electronics bay under the driver's seat and for vans that have the auxiliary battery package the way that works is there's this relay right here and this terminal connects to the starting battery which is under here and normally when the van is not running this relay is open um, so the starting battery and auxiliary battery are not connected together and then something like 30 seconds after you start the van is to give the starting battery a little bit of time to recover from the startup then the relay closes and it connects the auxiliary battery to the starting battery which of course is connected to the alternator so that's how it charges both. But it means that when you shut the van off and the relay opens that anything that you pull from the auxiliary battery tap right here um, if you leave it on or you um, you run the auxiliary battery down you won't also drag the starting battery down. So what we're going to do right now the only thing that I have connected to the auxiliary battery is the S-bar, the diesel heater. So we're going to replace the solid copper bar with a fuse. And I'm doing this at the recommendation of people on the Sprinter forums. So we're going to start by um, disconnecting the auxiliary battery. And we'll replace that fuse. And the other thing is we're going to putting this 60 amp breaker down here, mounting it on a piece of wood. And um, that'll be our circuit protection for the wire that goes from here over to our amp. And that will be accessible through this door. I don't expect I'm ever gonna blow that circuit breaker, but if I do, I can reach in through this door and reset it. So let's get the auxiliary battery disconnected. So under the hood of the van, the auxiliary battery is located over here. And we're going to disconnect the ground. So now with our test light, which today I'm actually using it as a test light and not just a poker, you'll notice we've got nothing at the auxiliary battery but the starting battery is still connected. So we're, we're completely dead on the circuit. And again, when you start the vehicle, these two will be connected together, but right now there's only voltage on the starting battery pen. You always want the lug that is going to take the most load. It's the one that you want on the bottom. And you're not supposed to put more than four terminals on one lug, at least according to the ABYC, American Boat and Yacht, Yacht Council. Okay, we're going to tighten those later because we need to put a lug on here and attach it to our circuit breaker.
these quarter inch lugs fit the blue C circuit breakers and the 5 16 lugs fit the factory auxiliary battery tap. On this side, everything is the way the van came stock. And on this side, you'll see one wire that I have hooked up. That goes to my S-Bar heater, which is over in the passenger seat box, but we'll get that to that in a minute. So the other thing is that we've now made two lugs here, and both of them go through 60 amp circuit breakers. So one of them, um, goes through the circuit breaker um, for the inverter and it travels under the floor over to the passenger seat box to run an inverter that we'll use to charge our batteries and the other line this line goes through a 60 amp breaker goes through the floor here which I have all the cables routed as neat as I can get them um, so you can see this is this is actually the line for the S-Bar. One of these wrapped wires is the positive for the inverter. One of them is the positive for the amplifier. And then the two blacks are the negatives. This is where I use my favorite approach of putting some grease on the ends of those bolts. Get it all over my hands in the process. I'll take my mounting plate and push it up against. And there's where I want my holes. I've taken a little piece of roof flashing, bent a 90 in it, and I'm going to put on this 2,000 degree heat shield material, making a little heat shield just to protect the amp a little bit from the uh, S-Bar heater. The S-Bar doesn't get that hot, but I guess you could say this is just peace of mind. We're going to bring power to the lugs on our inverter. So this is the positive wire that I wrapped in the anti-abrasion stuff. And I've already got my shrink wrap on there. And these are quarter inch terminals to match uh, the lug that's on the inverter. Put that on and give it a crimp. Now we'll slide the shrink wrap over it. And we'll do this one.
Now I'm going to wire up the plug that goes from our inverter to the rear of the van. And I'm doing this so that I can take advantage of the fact that I have um, an inverter charger in the rear of the van. So it's it's my main, um, it's a thousand watt inverter that I'll use to power my AC loads, but it has a charger built into it. And so I might as well take advantage of that rather than installing a second charger. So this will provide AC power to the charger. So we want to just wire on a regular uh, NEMA 15 plug onto the end of it. So that's what I'm doing here. Now one thing in wiring a plug like this, normally you use Romex in houses, which is solid stranded. And I haven't had great luck wrapping stranded wire around a screw terminal post, so you should never follow what someone does on the internet just because they say this is how to do it, because I don't know, I'm not an electrician, so I would recommend consulting an electrician before you do this. That said, what I'm going to do is I'm crimping on um, these terminals. That way they'll drop right on the screw terminal. I just feel like it's less likely to come loose, but I know it's typically not done for AC stuff. There's probably a good reason for it, so you may want to look into it yourself and let me know if I'm doing something obscenely wrong. Black goes to the copper post. The white goes to silver and the green goes to the green ground. I'm not a trusting fellow when it comes to cheap plastic. There's just a screw holding this together, so I put a zip tie around it just to make sure it stays together. Here's the back of the van, and here's the Magnum. This is the main inverter that we use to run our appliances. And you'll notice a duplex outlet right here. And this outlet is wired to the inverter at the front of the van, so it just travels through the walls and back to here. So when you activate the 600 watt inverter that's under the passenger seat pedestal, it makes this outlet live. So you can run anything from this while the vehicle's running. But we have plugged into it, we have the cord that just goes right into the magnum charger. So that's what activates the charging. Now what we need to do is do a little bit of math, and a 600 watt inverter at 12 volts will do 50 amps. That's not including any losses. And our Magnum, the charger built into the Magnum inverter, has a rating of 50 amps. The problem is, is if we ran the 600 watt inverter at its full rating of 600 watts, you know, 50 amps, um, it probably wouldn't last long. It'd probably heat up pretty quick. So what we're going to do now is we're going to limit the charger on the Magnum. In my case, I'm going to limit it to 30 amps, so that 30 amps is, I think, 480 watts. So we're not pushing the 600-watt inverter to its fullest. We're 
putting 480 watts through it. So the way we do it on the Magnum is we go into setup, we turn the knob to charge rate, and I have it set at 60%. So 60% ought to limit it to 30 amps. So now we will start the van where today is it's evening time now, so we're not getting hardly any solar, so we're about 0 0.1 amps that we're getting on solar. So everything that you're about to see um, is going to come from the, uh, the charger. Okay, now with the engine running, Pop off this cover, and here's the inverter. I go ahead and flip it on. And now we should see that starting to show up. Okay, there it goes. So the Magnum, I don't know if you can see that, showing. 27, 29, 30 amps, and we're showing around around 30 amps. It's a little bit variable, but there we go. We've got about 30 amps coming in now. One thing I think is pretty necessary is to run one of these slotted covers. That way you'll get ventilation in here. As you can see, this is nowhere near sealed. I can lift this up, you know, and you can see in there, and there's holes, so there's plenty of places that it can get air, but it's better if you install one of these as well. Now what I do, let's say that you're done charging, you're at the end of your drive. I'll just come up here. There's a button that says charger on off. You can see right now it says float charging, 29, 30 amps. If I just, and it says charge here, if I hit this, now I just turn the charger off so we're not getting anything. But I still need to remember to turn off that inverter under the seat. So let's go ahead and do that. Most of you that have been watching this channel for a while probably noticed that a lot of that footage is pretty old. It's actually about a year and a half old, and that's because I did all the wiring at one time. And back when I'd wired um, all the audio stuff and still had bare walls, that's when I ran all the wiring and installed that inverter. So I apologize about the old shaky camera phone video. In any event, um, I haven't published a video on this because I didn't want to... Um, present this method of charging until I'd actually had a chance to use it and for the last year and a half plus uh, we've used the van and have never needed it and that's just because the solar I've got a 300 watt solar panel on the roof has just done an amazing job of keeping the batteries charged but I had a scenario recently where we're getting ready to leave for a trip and the battery was discharged from the last time I'd used the van and um, I had started up the refrigerator and left for work that day and forgot to turn on the solar. So by the time that I got home, um, the battery was pretty low. And with all the fires here in California, we've had smoky skies. We were headed to the coast where it was overcast. So I went ahead and, and used the inverter for, um, for a few hours on that trip and it worked really well. So that's the reason in the long delay. So let's, real quickly, let's talk about the pros and cons of this setup. Um, if you already have an inverter charger, which is what I use, um, I really like the inverter charger combo because it's an inverter, um, it's a 50 amp PFC charger, and a transfer switch all in one. The transfer switch means that if you plug it into shore power, it just automatically starts charging the batteries. And when it's plugged into our second little 600 watt inverter, it thinks that it's shore power, so it just starts charging automatically. So having three things in one 
really helped save space and wiring and space has been the biggest issue for me because there's three of us using the small van and I don't want components mounted everywhere taking up all of our storage space so that's the primary reason that I went with this small 600 watt inverter. I think it, even though it worked well I would say you should also consider maybe using a thousand watt inverter because then you can push that inverter harder and you can charge at the full 50 amps that the magnum inverter charger will take and you're still not stressing that inverter. This one I'm guessing that if I don't software limit it to somewhere in the neighborhood of 35 amps that it might overheat so just something to think about. This little inverter was really inexpensive and it didn't take up hardly any space so that's why I used it. So one thing that's really nice when you go this route is that um, it's one less device to program. So the solar charge controller has a program for the battery and the inverter charger has a program. So whether I'm charged into sh charging by shore power or charging by the little inverter, the settings for the battery are the same. Whereas if I was using a separate battery to battery charger, that would be a third device to have to program. The other thing is that using the inverter charger to charge, uh, it does a proper three stage charge on your battery. So it does the bulk absorb float and keeps the batteries happy. Um, another advantage of it is that since we have a second inverter, if that one were to fail, I would still be able to run devices off of the small inverter. Um, another thing is if I was running a battery to battery charger, those run off DC power. And so I'd have to run really thick, heavy gauge cable all the way to the back of the van. Whereas if I'm sending AC power to the back of the van, I only need um, like basically extension cord size wire. Um, I used uh, 12 3 wire, which is really a lot less expensive and a lot lighter than running heavy gauge cable. So that's another advantage of this setup. And finally another advantage is having that other inverter you can use it to do other things. So um, when the engine's running you could use the outlet in the back to heat water or do some other tasks. So that's really nice. So the downsides, definitely the big downside of my setup is I don't have it set up to be automatic in any fashion. If I want to use it I have to open up the little door under the passenger seat pedestal and turn it on. And the bigger thing is I have to remember to turn it off when I get to my destination. Mine is hooked up to my auxiliary battery. If I did leave it on, probably what would happen is it would discharge my auxiliary battery down to the point that the inverter hit its 12 volt cutoff and then it would shut off. And I'd be okay because it's an auxiliary battery, not a starting battery. If you're hooking it up to your starting battery, um, you should be even more concerned because you don't want to get to a point where if you're hitting the inverter cutoff where it shuts off at 12 volts, you may not have enough voltage to start the vehicle. So you have to be careful of that. So there are a number of ways if you want to make it automatic, you could use like a Blue Seas ACR automatic charge relay or some sort of relay that triggers that inverter um, when you start the engine. Um, plenty of ways to do that to make it automatic. Clearly, I have no interest in doing that because this is the first time I've used it in a year and a half. I don't mind I don't mind hitting that switch. Aside from that, I can't think of any other downsides other than the fact that mine is, is a manual operation. Um, if you look at it on paper, it's not the most efficient way to charge, and that's because a lot of these inverters only have an 80 or 85% efficiency. So you're taking 12 volts from the alternator you're losing some of that and converting it to AC power and then you're sending it to the back and you're reconverting it to DC. So on paper it's not efficient but it doesn't matter. I mean I'm still getting the charge that I need in the batteries so I'm not too concerned with the paper, the on paper efficiency. Alright guys if you want more information on the different ways that you can charge your batteries uh, you can visit our website which I will put a link up here. And as always, thank you guys for watching.